Hey, did you know that most of the problems that young Christians experience today come from spiritual immaturity? Why? Well, because if you're spiritually immature, you can make a lot of dumb decisions. I know that sounds harsh, but it's true. Because those decisions are mostly made from your fleshly nature and not your spiritual nature. So a lot of the times, you make decisions on what you feel like instead of what you know to be true. And the problem is that what you feel change all the time. Your emotions are fickle. So it's, now it's like this, tomorrow it's like that. It changes all the time. It's not based on truth and it can lie to you. But spiritual, mature people make decisions based on the truth and not on feelings. So how do you really grow spiritually in God to become a mature Christian? Well, let's start at the beginning. There are four basic things that you need to grow spiritually in God. They're like the, the four wheels of a car that you need to move forward with God, to start a relationship with Him and to grow with Him. They are, number one, the Word of God. Number two, prayer. Number three, fellowship with other believers, kanoinia. And number four, to testify and share the gospel. Now those are the four basic things that you need to grow spiritually, the four wheels. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the first one, the Word of God. So let's get to it. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moritz and welcome. To DLM Christian Lifestyle. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, to grow spiritually, you need to get to know God Himself. You need to learn who God really is. It works the same in any kind of relationship. When you meet somebody for the first time, you need to get to know them, who, who they really are, what do they like, what don't they like, what's their personality like. And with God, it is exactly the same. You need to get to know who God really is. And God already revealed Himself to us through His Word, the Bible. Peter says in 2 Peter 1 verse 3 to 8, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Now listen to this. Through our knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. He says He's given us everything we need. Not uh, just giving you some things. No, He says everything we need for a godly life. How did He give it to us? Through what? Through our knowledge of Him. Some Christians believe their relationship with God goes on how they feel their relationship with God. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says through our knowledge of God. So how do you increase your knowledge of God? Well, you look at what He says. How do you know that? Well, you look at what He has already revealed to us. His Word, the Bible. You have to study the Bible because it's the only truth out there in the world. The only source of absolute truth. And you want to make your decisions based on truth and not on feelings. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It says thoroughly equipped, which means you don't need to add anything to the Bible to be fully equipped. So be very careful when you listen to Christian preachers out there. Don't just believe anything that they're saying. Test what they're saying with the Bible. Even me. Everything I say in all my videos, you have to go and test if what I say is truth or not according to the Bible. In 1 John 4 verse 1, he says, Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. God didn't say that He will test preachers for you. He says you have to do it. But how will you know if somebody speaks the truth or not if you don't know 
what the Bible teaches us. So to grow spiritually stronger and mature, you need to learn, you need to study what the Bible teaches us. If you know what the Bible says, you won't be easily misled by any new wind of new doctrine or new teaching that comes along. Now, if you're a new Christian, be patient. It will take time. But as you go through this whole journey, and as you learn what the Bible teaches about God, you will grow stronger, you will grow more spiritually in God. But you got to be serious about getting to know God, get to know Him more fully, who He truly is. Remember, if you're a new Christian, your new spiritual nature is like a newborn baby, and it needs to feed on the Bible to grow. That is its food. 1 Peter 2 verse 2 says, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. It says with pure spiritual milk. There's a lot of milk out there. <laughs> There's a lot of milk out there. But not all of it is pure milk. And you don't want to feed your spirit with impure milk, meaning with false teachings. Now listen to this, because this is very important. Because as you read and as you grow in knowledge of Christ, of God, the Holy Spirit in you will also start to speak to you and reveal to you the deep truths of God. There are things that I understand now as a more mature Christian, which before, as a young Christian, I couldn't understand. Because I had to first feed myself with milk before I can go to solid food. But there are a lot of Christians who just keep on feeding on milk, so they don't grow at all. I mean, just think about this, how ugly is it for a grown man or woman to be in diapers, to still be a baby? Because that is what most Christians spiritually still look like. After years of being a Christian, they get stuck, they don't grow up, they stay babies. Now the biggest thing that you need to learn as a new Christian is the difference between your old sinful nature, the fleshly nature, and your new spiritual nature. And you have to take God's Word and study it to understand the difference. Mature Christians know how to make wise decisions because they know the truth of the Bible and they've learned how to live through the Spirit and not through their fleshly old nature. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So the Word of God is alive, it is active sharper than a two-edged sword and it clearly shows us the difference between our soul and our spirit. Most young Christians don't know that there's a difference between the two because there is. The knowledge and the understanding of this helped me to grow immensely and uh, in the future I will make some more videos about that to explain it in more detail. But in short, we are born into this sinful world and we are spiritually dead. We only know how to live through our soul, which is our emotions, our intellect, and our will. But then, when we become a reborn Christian, God opens up our spiritual eyes, and we can see spiritual things. We are reborn spiritually. And then, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside our spirit to help us with our new life in Jesus Christ. So you get a new spiritual nature and you need to learn how to live through this new spiritual nature. How do you learn it? How do you, how do you know? Well, you need to learn what the Bible teaches about. The Bible will guide you in all truth. Don't be a lazy Christian. Don't be a spiritual baby. But start to read the Bible and ask God also to reveal these truths to you. And there is no way that you can grow spiritually without the Word of God about true knowledge of God, about who He is. That is why we have so many lukewarm Christians in the world today. Because Christians are lazy. They don't read the Bible anymore. And the true Word of God is preached less and less and less in churches today. When you start to read the whole Bible, it'll shock you of how many things you will read that you've never heard in some churches. And then you'll also 
know how many things they have to say that isn't in the Bible. We as the church need to move back to the Bible. We need to preach it, we need to read it, we need to study it, we need to live it. Because only the truth will set people free. Now listen very carefully. God works through His Word, through His Spirit, and through revelation. As you grow more spiritually, God reveals deeper truths to you when you are ready for it. It's like you have a veil on, and God slowly lifts the veil, and you start to see clearly, and you understand the spiritual things. So today, there might be a few things that you don't understand, but someday, when it, when it is time, when you are ready, God will lift the veil, and woof, suddenly, it opens up to you. Suddenly, you have clarity, and then it's like, oh, now I understand it. Is spiritual growth. And when you understand it, God also works the faith in you to accept it. Your faith right now might be small, but it grows. God also talks in the Bible of those of little faith, but spiritual growth is growth in faith. We read in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And faith is in your spirit. It's a knowing that the Word of God is true. It's not, oh, I hope it is. No, it's a knowing, a deep knowing. And the deeper it grows, the deeper you grow in God. That is spiritual growth. And the more you grow in this knowing in God, who He truly is, the more your spiritual growth is built on Jesus Christ outside of yourself and your feelings. I know that's a little bit heavy, but Take some time, let it sink in, uh, go a little bit back, rewind, play it again so it can make sense to you what I'm saying. But remember, real spiritual growth comes from your spirit that is feeding on the Bible. Jesus says in John 6 verse 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. True spiritual growth is a journey of sanctification to get to know Jesus more, who He is, and more fuller, and to become more and more like Him, to be more Christ-minded. And to do that, you need to know who Jesus is. And you get to know Him in the Bible, and through the Holy Spirit, and through His revelation. In the next video, I'll take this a little bit further. And uh, remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, and also like the video.